Sound design. Live. All right, I have a question for you. In this situation, in this system, with these three speakers here, where should they be aligned? So if we look at this speaker and this speaker, should they be aligned at this position? I'll give you two options, or this position. Now, some of you might be saying, well, that depends on what type of speaker and the coverage and the situation and various things. And so I'll tell you that um, part of the problem here that we're gonna be talking about today is that this speaker here that looks like a center fill is actually not a center fill. So let me show you the results. I have those over here. So here are results one, two, and three. I made these by creating three different presets in compass here for the different alignment and level settings and here are the results so let's just um, look at this coverage first so here in red this is the highest level and then the other colors are attenuating down from that so red is the highest then lime green then this teal color and they change for every 3 db 3 db increments so we can see here in this image that we've got a bunch of red over here on left and right, but not a lot in the center. And then here in this prediction, we have some more red here in the center, but it's gotten smaller over here. And then I think we can all agree that this image over here, this prediction, has the most amount of red uh, across the audience and then um, some smaller of this lime green color and then a little bit of this teal color, which means that in this final prediction over here on the right, we've managed to get almost the entire audience within um, 6 dB, and then there's still some here that gets down into 9 dB. So three different potential solutions here, and how did I get those? It was by choosing different positions for the crossover alignment and the level setting. So in this design here, I put my microphone at this position, which I'll call vertical top for this center speaker. And I also set the level here. Moving to this middle prediction here, I left my crossover at the same position, but then I level set this center speaker here at its on axis position, matching the left and right on axis positions. And then on this design over here on the right, I matched level at the on-axis positions, and then I found the crossover here between on-axis with left and on-axis with center. So why am I talking about this? Because when I actually did this in the field, this is from a real design that I worked on, I screwed this up. Let me talk about some reasons why maybe I screwed that up. So let's look at my measurements here from the field. So this, these are two different microphone positions. Maybe I should point them out on the design over here. So um, these are measurement positions um, here on X with, with right, and then here at vertical top. So in this black trace here, you're seeing just a right on axis um, just right solo, I believe, or maybe maybe the entire system was on. Let's see. No, this is just right on axis. And then this purple guy is right plus left at that vertical top position, vertical top with the center. What does this mean? Well, walking in the door, I was thinking that this speaker was a center fill. If that were true, then this purple trace here should be up about... 4 dB and it should be it should match this let me show you a little bit more what I mean by this so if we go to look at a top view here and we mute the center speaker and just look at prediction of left and right about an octave around 4 kilohertz then we can see what's going on here um, because if this were to act as a center fill what we would expect is a triangle shape to fill in here with the center fill. But as you can see, this red color over here, this never makes it to the center over here. 
So for this to work as simply a center fill, then we will want to see left and right make it all the way to the center here. Um, but that, that never really happens. So what this speaker really is, is a main. So this is a left, center, right sound system design. It's just that the center speaker is underpowered. And that's why um, I had some trouble with it. And that's also why I was thinking, oh, this is a center fill. But that doesn't explain my mistake because <laughs> a center fill st speaker would still not be aligned at this top position here, or at least that's not the way I would expect it to be done. I think the reason maybe I was confused is because I was thinking that I was thinking of this as a downfill. Now, a downfill is, you know, picking up the space between, you know, the bottom box in your array and your front fills, or maybe there's no front fills. But in that case, you might think of it more along the vertical plane. Uh, and therefore, you might be thinking of your microphone position and your alignment position in terms of the vertical plane. But since this is, um, originally I was thinking as a center fill, but now I know it's a main speaker, where we really need to be looking for the crossover microphone position is between the on axis positions. So I guess I should talk about um, how I found the on axis positions, how I found the crossover position, um, and then what that final alignment looked like. So let's go back to the top view here. Let's change the SPL settings here so that we can see a little bit finer resolution. So when it comes to on-axis microphone position, I'm repeating this mostly for myself, by the way. Some of you may know this by heart, but this is something that I get confused by easily and I forget it, so I need to repeat it and tell myself. When it comes to the on-axis microphone position, when the speaker is asymmetrical with the plane that it's covering, which is what's happening here, it's asymmetrical vertically and horizontally, then we're not necessarily going to find our on-axis position exactly on axis with the speaker. You can see that the speaker is actually touching down here, right here in the audience. Here I can draw. So here's where the speaker is actually touching down on the audience. But I put my microphone here because I was just kind of looking for um, the center of the audience. And we can see that it worked out pretty well that it's also the loudest position. So those are the two on axis positions. And the next thing I did was to match level between those positions. So over here in the measurement viewer, I took a solo measurement of left on axis. There it is. I can make it bigger. And then I took a solo measurement of my center on axis, and I did a tiny EQ change there. So there are the two on top of each other. They've just been EQ'd a tiny bit to match. Um, and then the next step was to find the crossover microphone position. And I did all of that over here in the impulse response window. So I can show you how that works here. I back over here in compass. Let's mute the right speaker and unmute the center speaker. Now, when I turn these on together, we might only see one peak. That's because these have already been aligned. So what I need to do is create a misalignment for a second. Okay, now we see two peaks and you see how they are the same height. So how I found this microphone position was by drawing a line between these on axis positions. So I'll clear this and just for a second, I'll turn off the center lines. So here's on axis with left, here's on axis center, and then I drew a line between those two spots, just as a visual aid. And then I just put the microphone down there somewhere, and this is exactly how I would do it in the field as well. So here's our crossover position, and now over here in the express settings, I would just choose that microphone and then let's say that I adjust this. I'll go from 3.6 meters um, on the y-axis to 3 meters. And now we can see that the heights have changed. Okay, so all I needed to do was move that mic around 
until I found where these two peaks were matching. So I just played around with that and 3.6 meters, this position here seemed like a good spot for that. This is where it ended up on the design here. Um, and then all I needed to do was align them and that required um, 0 0.39 milliseconds of delay. But I guess let me show you how I did that here. So I'm not sure which is which. So I would just mute one of these. I'll mute the center. And we see the center is the late arriving one, right? Because remember I added an extra millisecond of delay. So normally now I would unmute the center since it is the late arriving one. Align here, then unmute the left again. And now I can see the difference between 27.03 milliseconds and 26. And I would add that into my delay. But in this case, I already know what the delay is. So I'll go ahead and fix that. 0 0.39. And now when I turn these on together, I should see those peaks right on top of each other. And um, I could also be looking at the phase display as well and making sure that those phase graphs match. I'm getting summation through here. And now I could go ahead and take a look at my model here and do a prediction around that area where I'm trying to find the alignment. And looking at this line here, now seeing that line. Okay, so I hope that's helpful for you. Um, this is something, these are the kind of things that in the field, sometimes I forget how to do. And so I should really be writing like, you know, step-by-step -step things in my, you know, tuning checklist to make sure that I don't forget how to do them. All right, let me know if you have any questions or suggestions for me, and I'll see you in the next video. Sound design. Yeah.